from something you forgot along the way, stories of wisdom and learning. And today's story is number 30, on mastering and art. Whatever the art, it cannot be mastered unless the pupil is thrown into a ravine and made to crawl back up again and again. Quote, unquote, kindness results in superficial understanding. Okay, let's read it one more time. On mastering an art, whatever the art is, it cannot be mastered unless the pupil is thrown into a ravine and made to crawl back up again and again. Kindness results in superficial understanding. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, this book is a translation from a Japanese. And in Japanese culture, especially, uh, or actually in Buddhism too, when we want to learn something, um, if we don't have a master, then we just decide like arbitrarily that, okay, I'm now a master. <laughs> because we don't know, that we don't have that. A benchmark, you know, how far do I go on this path before I can feel or declare that I have arrived at the goal or the destination. Some people say, yeah, there is no destination. It's a constant improvement. Um, but we are kind of in the dark when we are going forward on the on any path. We need to have some kind of a compass to navigate this journey. And, uh, yeah, and in Buddhism, we have this uh, proverb or expression that, you know, when you're like threading a needle, so that thread, and then you start sewing something, that thread only follows the needle. Wherever the needle is moving as you sew, the thread naturally follows. It cannot go the opposite direction or somewhere else tangentially. It just follows the needle. Um, yeah. And what that means is that, uh, yeah, if we, if the teacher we are following, for example, uh, wants to remain in their own comfort zone, and don't know like how far to stretch the limitations of the pupil, then naturally they cannot grow beyond their own limiting beliefs. Yeah, I love this expression too, limiting beliefs. We all have, we decide, well, this is how much I can grow, or now I'm a master, I've, I've mastered everything, I know it all. And because of the blind passion of conceit or pridefulness, so we are all uh, prone to kind of falling into this trap. And especially for uh, uh, bodhisattvas who are enlightenment seekers or true happiness seekers, uh, this mind of conceit is actually the most dangerous one. And it will trouble the seeker or the practitioner until the very end. Um, Maybe it's easier to kind of uh, curb their desires and go in moderation or or other passions, but especially conceit because it's like once we are in it, we don't recognize that we are in it. You know, unless we have a point of reference by comparison, we cannot know it. Like a person who's always been um, blind, they cannot know what it's like to see. So that's one point that I learned from this short passage. Uh, we need to choose our teacher uh, carefully and so that the teacher doesn't just choose the path of least resistance and make us feel that, oh, okay, now I'm good and I know it enough. Because kindness like that results in superficial understanding. Our ultimate goal in Buddhism, obviously, our goal is not gaining knowledge. Uh, we want to overcome suffering. And when we talk about suffering, it's the particularly suffering of old age and sickness and death and dying. 
that's what Siddhartha uh, struggled with uh, when he was growing up in his palace and all that comfort. He knew that with all the comforts that he had, all the kindness that were, he was being shown by his father, who was the king, and all the people entertaining him, <clears throat> he, he knew that kindness is not going to last. And therefore, he demanded more uh, challenging situation. And he, he sought it out and he obtained a level of enlightenment that goes beyond the suffering of old age and sickness and dying. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so if a person is not aiming for the same thing, maybe they just uh, become satisfied with gaining knowledge. In Buddhism, there are more than 7,000 sutras, and uh, all these teachings, you know, people get fascinated by these teachings, and uh, we might get carried away pursuing the knowledge because it feels so good. <laughs> And then we might forget to go forward uh, experientially, viscerally. We want to have that experience of finding the happiness that holds us fast, never to abandon us. Yeah, and in order to go forward, so we need to, you know, um, because if you think about like the suffering um, of sickness or aging or death, the mind sometimes goes through this ab abyss. Yeah. So unless we know the depths of that abyss, the teacher knows that the depths of that darkness, so we cannot guide people to, to the height of the light, which is uh, absolute. Um, yeah, we have a poem that says, uh, the deeper the valley, the higher the mountain. So to the extent we confront the depths of the darkness in the mind, to that extent we will be able to enjoy the light that gives us certainty, assurance, and peace of mind that doesn't waver all the time, that is immovable and unshakable. Okay, very good. So good job everyone for being here, practicing together. Uh, today is the first Tuesday of the month, so we're going to have the women's group at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, which is 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can share the videos on the YouTube channel to uh, invite people around us to the Dharma. And have a wonderful Tuesday. Okay, bye.